So here I am at long last with Madonna in her trailer in the middle of the rehearsal hall. How are you doing? Um, I'm doing re really pretty good considering the fact that I haven't slept in about three months. <laughs> and you sound a bit husky. Yeah, I'm losing my voice. Is that too much singing? Too much singing and too much screaming at everybody. <laughs> so how, how well is the rehearsal going? I think we're doing really well considering all the work that's being done. Um, this is a really complicated show. I get the impression you're not very good at delegating, that you have to like oversee every part yes. of everything. <laughs> yeah, that's why you're yes. so tired. Yeah, it's true. Is that because you're a perfectionist or because, yes. yeah, so your team, the team around you must be pretty good to satisfy. Yeah, they're great. If they're not, they're going to know about it. <laughs> <laughs> so how many people, like, we're in this huge, it's like uh, an aircraft hangar, how many people are working on Madonna's new show? Oh my God, I don't even know. I mean, there's seven dancers, two singers, me, ten, eight musicians, eighteen. All the musicians have their own tech. What's a tech? Uh, like someone who takes care of their oh, instruments right. and stuff. Okay. So that's eight more. I mean, and then there's people who work the soundboards, and there's people who do the lighting, and then there's the, all the guys that move all the stuff. And I mean, there must be a hundred people in here working right now. What kind of set is it going to be? I mean, you've, every time you go out, there's something different. Mm -hmm. Every two years, you tend to come up with something new, something different, something people aren't expecting. Mm -hmm. So what's it going to be this time? Well, um, I don't want to give away a lot of the surprises I want, but um, I want it to be a surprise to people when they see it. Right. Um, but I can say that we basically create four different worlds in, mm -hmm. on the stage. And in each of these stages, a different mood is set. And in each of these moods, I choose to put certain songs in the moods, you know what I mean? Are these old songs or the new There's, songs? Uh, everything, everything, from my very first record to stuff that a lot of people haven't heard from the Dick Tracy soundtrack. Talking so it, it really runs the gamut from, you know, my early records to my present records and then stuff that's more in the period feel, which was what, what Dick Tracy's in. There's there's some stuff that's very 1940s. So I tried to, to ha like have the best of both worlds, keep a period flavor, but still have some kind of a modern mm -hmm. sound to it. Yeah. So, but you will <coughs> release the, um, maybe a couple of the period tracks as singles. I'd love to. I think it's just going to shock so many people. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm in favor of that. Do you think, are you a little nervous that like, um, although you've got a huge broad kind of audience, are the 15, the 14, 15 year old kind of fans that you have, are they going to be a little bit, hey, what's this, you know? Well, the thing is, it's coming out at the same time that Dick Tracy's coming out, so they have to understand that it goes hand in hand with, I mean, Dick Tracy takes place in 1940, I, I wear clothes in that that I wouldn't wear now. I mean, they're, I think they're going to understand that it's it comes from a, a different time. Mm. But there's a, a sort of a cartoon quality about the soundtrack as well. Right. I'm sort of taking on a lot of different characters, yes. yeah. but trying to keep in that time frame. I think yeah, I think you'll also capture a new audience, a much older audience. You know, I can mm -hmm. see this being played in, in quite elegant restaurants and, mm -hmm. and things like that. Does that please you? Is, is yeah, that, is of course. That... I, don't, I don't care who listens to my music. The more it reaches, the better. So how long did the album actually take you to make? I'd say about eight months. Is that is that like normal for you for no, an album? No, it takes me less time usually. But I was also shooting the movie while I was writing the songs. So, and then I changed a lot of the songs based on our, per the request of Warren Beatty because I wanted some of them to be in the movie and he wanted me to change some of the lyrics. Right. So I had to make alterations that I normally wouldn't have done because it, it is in fact a collaboration. It is coming out together um, yeah with the movie <clears throat> right talking about the movie um how confident are you about dick tracy it's gonna be, i mean it's been billed as the smash of the summer of 1990 are you confident about that or are you a little nervous about the hype or well uh, yeah i am nervous about it but i have i have a lot of po positive feelings about it i saw a rough cut of the movie recently and i think it's really great it's, it's definitely the best movie i've ever been in and he's the best director i've ever worked with and he's had a lot of success and I think it has a lot of commercial appeal, so I think there's a lot going for it that it would be a big hit. I don't want to jinx myself. You yeah, know, I'm of superstitious, so I just keep my fingers crossed how, and hope for the best. How difficult was it um, for you to be directed by, act alongside with, uh -huh. and be, you know, personally involved with Warren Beatty at the time? Didn't didn't you kind of scratch each other's eyes out oh, no. all the time? Not at all. No, was no. It easy. Well, I mean, first of all, our our relationship developed as we were working. It wasn't like we were already involved and then we started doing the movies. So it was 
it was like the energy that you have when you first meet someone and you're really attracted to them but you don't know them well enough to scratch their eyes exactly. out you just use that that energy was sort of kept us going right. you know what I mean and and, and 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 actually inspired me in the work that we had to do and he's very professional and so am I so there was never a time where we would let personal issues get in the way kind yeah of thing. yeah and he's a very very diplomatic easygoing director he does not He's not tyrannical. He yeah. doesn't. It's not a tense set. You know what I mean. And he get, he's very generous with actors, and he gives you whatever you need to get the scene done. He right. can separate. So as long as you can do that, then it's okay. nobody wants to tear each other's eyes out. So how do you feel about all the press attention that's that's not only come on Dick Tracy? I mean, I think probably you know, if we're both honest, the the thing between yourself and Warren Beatty has definitely helped the publicity of the movie. But does that please you in a way, or do you just full stop hate the attention on your personal life? Well, I mean, or if you a celebrity is going to go out with a celebrity, people are going to want to know about it. I'm not surprised by it. I just accept it as a way of life. Is there a limit to what you'll you'll take? With the yeah, I mean, if they're like, it's it's one it's one thing for them to like say, oh, they're an item, whatever. They we saw them going here, we saw them going there. Mm. Will they get married? I I don't mind anything that's positive. What I don't like is negative. You yeah. know, like. He's doing this to her. She's doing. I mean, because it's all made up, anyways. And if they're going to make it up, they might as well just be positive. That's the only thing I don't like. <clears throat> Do you think that's damaging to a relationship? When it can be rough, because even if it's not true, you know, and you read something about, there's a part you know, of you that's going that mm -hmm. goes well. Do you know that person? Or, <laughs> you know, I yeah. mean, it's hard. It really is hard. Yeah. You read that you're the person you're going out with is going out with somebody else. It's yeah. like. It, it, but you, you just get a, you know, a, you know, a thick skin for it. After a while, you just, as long as a relationship's going well, those things don't bother you. Right. It's when it's not going well that you start, yeah. you know, sort of tuning into that stuff. How about your family? How do they feel about kind of the constant attention on your time? Because you've got what, four brothers, and three, four brothers and three four sisters, and four sisters. Um, my family doesn't really deal with it. I mean, they don't bring it up. They don't say, God, it really. I can't believe all the attention you get. They don't call attention to it. They just treat me like a normal human being. Right. You know, and my brother goes, for instance, my brother is working with me on the show. He's the artistic director. And he's um, staying at my house right now. And he goes running with me in the morning. And a lot of times there's paparazzi. He just laughs. Get, his picture gets taken too. And he just laughs. I mean, he uh, they understand. Sad. Yeah. Do you think your brothers and sisters think it's hard for your brothers and sisters to be Madonna's brother or sister? Well... I wouldn't want it to be the other way around. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. I mean, I can't really speak for them. I think it would be hard for anybody to be in that position, to yeah. be a sibling of someone who is incredibly famous. But I think I have a really good relationship with all my brothers and sisters, and I think that whatever bad feelings they have about it or whatever competition they feel, it's healthy. Yeah. And th that they've all come to terms with it. How many, would you say, close friends you have around you? I'd say I have about eight to ten really close friends. And do you, yeah. get, do you get to see them quite a bit? They come and visit me when I'm working. Right. And if I can't see them, I call them. Are they all in this business? Yeah. Pretty much so, I guess. Pretty much, yeah. They're in the music business or the movie business, or they're artists in some way. Yeah. Yeah. And are they are they friends that you've known for years and years? Are they yeah. old friends from way yeah. back? A couple of them are, and those are my longest friends, like the ones that knew me way back when. Have you ever found that once you start getting a little bit well-known, you can't sometimes relate to your old friends. Some of the old friends perceive you in a different way. Well, once I left home home, which is Michigan, I never could deal with my friends. This was before I was famous. And I, d I can't honestly say that I noticed that my friends that I had before I was famous changed on me. I guess I have to chalk that up to my impeccable taste in people. <laughs> <laughs> so what about, what about the future? How far ahead in the future do you think? just like the next rehearsal day or the tour or, or the I guess I'm thinking about right about that last day of the show <laughs> really and then what and then what are you gonna and do? then I'm gonna take a vacation <laughs> a very long one no I don't like long vacations but at least at least 10 days that's all you're gonna take after uh -huh. a world tour yeah 10 days yeah you're mad I'd be off for I six am. months <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know what to do with myself for six months do you think like this is where I want to be in 10 years or 20 years or 30 years or do you just take what comes your you know take it real slowly well I'm not really specific past about a year ahead of myself I mean right. I have visions of myself I mean I know that I want to make more movies I want to keep writing music right and recording 
I'm sure that I will get involved in other things in my life. I just know that's as I've grown, my interests have expanded and my artistic expression has expanded. So, and I, I'm not really sure what that is. What about in your personal life? Do you, I mean, and I—that's uh, the well, that's the other thing. I mean, I I would love to have a family, have children, and yeah, all that kind sure. of stuff. So I don't know when, but. So you're 31 years old now. Yeah. 31 years mm -hmm. old now. Obviously, you're gonna have children probably within the next nine years. Yes, so, absolutely. Okay, so you're still gonna, you're never you can never be unfamous now. You know, you're famous for, for the rest of your life, whatever happens. So, what kind of environment would you like to bring your children up in? Well, I definitely have to send them to a Catholic school. Really? <laughs> <laughs> that surprises yes. me. Would you? Yeah, I think I would. Because you've had a lot of qualms about your own faith, haven't you? No, I don't. I, I I don't know. I mean, the thing about the thing that I appreciated about Catholic school for me while I was growing up, uh, uh, aside from the issues of Catholicism that I disagree with, was basically that that there was a kind of attentiveness that you don't get in in public schools here. But right. I guess what I would I I just would find a good private school to send them to. But God knows that's hard to do. Yeah, and and also the safety aspect in LA. A lot of yeah. a lot of stars, have, you know, like move to England because it's a little bit safer. Than, schools you know, are supposed to be really great in England. Maybe I'll move there. Oh, but then paparazzi will be on my front door. <laughs> <laughs> are they worse in Britain than they yes. are here? Are oh, they yeah. are they really the worst in the world? Yeah, for me they are. In what way are they vindictive or they just they're don't relentless? Give up? They're relentless. They're just never not there. <laughs> really? Yeah. So would it would that stop you from moving to London or unless they uh, unless they pack it unless in. we made a pact or something? <laughs> okay, well, well, I'll see you on Tuesday and Thursday every week. <laughs> How happy would you say you are now with what, everything that's happening to you? Or are you too busy to even think about it? <clears throat> no, I, I'm I'm really happy about my show. It's definitely a when you have a dream about something and you envision things in your head and slowly and slowly and slowly they come to life and you see the set and it's what you dreamed of and you see the pieces and it's what you dreamed of and you go then you think that life is good and that it's right. possible to achieve your goals. I mean, obviously I'm exhausted and I wish that I wasn't so tired, but I don't think you can have this something this good unless you work your ass off. Does that gall you when you think of like eight years eight, Was it how many years ago did you leave Michigan to go to New York? I don't know. I'm too tired to do the math. It was about 12, maybe. <laughs> we 18, 19, something like 17. that. 17. 17. So does it gore you when you think back? I mean, it's not that long ago that you were like, you know, working in Dunkin' Donuts and, and looking for french fries and Burger King in the dustbin. I think it's funny. Do you? Yeah. Do, can you comprehend I can what's definitely happened? say I started at the bottom. Yeah. Mm. But I mean, can you comprehend what's happened to you at home with everything? I can comprehend it because I've gone through it and I know how I've gone through it and it's been a long process. I mean, I've been there every step of the way. I, I could say that when I was at that point, I could never have comprehended this. Right. Absolutely. I mean, I never could imagine that I would have the things I have, that I would do the things that I'm doing, that I would know what I know. But, uh, you know, I don't think anyone can. In terms of... Um the way that you got to how you are now and the things that have happened to you. Do you have many regrets? No. Nothing. Would you have done anything differently? No. Even the bad things? The bad things happen for a reason and mistakes are teachers, you know what I mean? Everybody makes mistakes. And if you don't have mistakes to teach you, then what, what do you learn from, you know what I mean? But just be reading through all your biogs and all your, the facts and figures about Madonna and stuff and your you know, millions and millions of pounds in your bank account. Do you know how much you've got in your bank account? Do no. You, you don't? Uh, and, and furthermore, when, when people say how much money I make, they talk about my gross. Not like after I pay off all my percentages that I owe my managers and my agents and the taxes. And the hundred people working here. Yeah. Right? Let's just say I'm comfortable. <laughs> I'm very comfortable in her comfortable trailer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but what about, I've read that you're a very good businesswoman. I mean, are you aware of, of where of, all the money goes? Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you have companies and things like that? Yeah, I have different corporations and I have a business manager that handles everything and I bug him regularly. So, How, how much of your time, say per day, is spent organizing just your business affairs, let alone tours and all that kind of stuff? Is it I'd big, say about uh, two hours a day. Do you, are you involved in any kind of charity work? I know you do a lot for AIDS, AIDS, AIDS yeah. benefits. Can you tell me a little bit about what you've been doing? Well, about um, recently, I mean, it, uh, there I'm very involved with APLA, which is AIDS Project Los Angeles. Um, I'm involved in a lot of fundraising for them, <clears throat> whether it's uh, you know art auctions or, for instance, there's a dance marathon here that I was involved in last year, where you know you get people that. Um, sponsor you for as many hours as you can dance and then all the money goes to AIDS research. How many hours did you do? I was there, for, I guess I was there for about 12 hours. God! So, 
I'm real involved in that, and just on a personal level, I have a lot of friends with AIDS, just sort of dealing with them, you know, and being there for them, and helping them out. In the Like a Prayer album, Sleeve, there was a little leaflet, uh -huh. all about basically explaining about AIDS, and mm -hmm. uh, condoning safe sex, encouraging safe sex. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you think that's just, in LA, I mean, you live the LA lifestyle, are people changing? I mean, I think are so. people's attitudes changed? Are, are people being I can only judge. I can only judge by the youth, really, that I work with. I mean, the dancers and stuff, and I listen to them, and I mean, I hear, I overhear what they say, and mm -hmm. I, I, and you know, I have some younger brothers and sisters, and from from what I can judge, from the people around me, I think that that people really are changing their lifestyles. Just saying that they would never have sex without using a rubber and stuff like that, and I think people are much more careful about who they sleep with. How do you think you would be yourself if you were 18 and living in this age? Would you have been sensible? Absolutely. I would be sensible if I were 18 now. I am sensible now. Have you always <laughs> been sensible? About some things, yes. But I mean, I mean, when it's a life-threatening issue, I'm sensible. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I wear my seatbelt and I wear a rubber. I mean, it's just... <laughs> you uh, wear the rubber. You, know, you know what I mean? I yeah. mean, it depends. I, I mean, I could say that I'm not sensible about some things, but... Right. <clears throat> and the, and the rainforest is another thing that I'm pretty active in, just raising public awareness about what's happening down there. And I did a, a benefit concert in New York a while back to raise money, you know, for the mm -hmm. people to raise money for a lot of reasons for people to go and lobby um, against the American corporations that are going down there and getting these Brazilian people to like saying they're paying them this money to get rid of all their trees. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you know, the ozone layer is drifting away, and we'll, we'll all have hamburgers and no air to breathe. So, what do you reckon? What do you reckon Madonna's going to be in ten years? She's going to be. She's going to have rollers in her hair and three screaming kids around her feet. No, dragging them around the world. <laughs> no, I will never have rollers in my hair, <laughs> and I will never have children that scream. They'll all be good. They'll all be <laughs> angels. I'll tape their mouths. <laughs> have their tongues cut out. Exactly. Do you think you'll get married again? I don't know. Do you want to get married again? I don't know. <laughs> I'm still getting over the last one. Ask me in a couple of years. But you wouldn't like to like see yourself at 50 on your own, would you? I don't know. Isn't life the sharing, though? Yeah, but you don't have to be married to be right. with somebody. Even though you've, you know, you've had a lot of qualms about, you know, your Catholicism and stuff. Is it still ingrained in you that at the end of the day, you get married and you have children, you bring them up in the Catholic faith? No, not anymore. It used to be that way with me, but I don't believe that anymore. I think the most important thing in life is to be happy and to have friends and to find at least one person that you can be really intimate with. That's it. How attainable do you think it is? I think it's attainable. I just have to be open to it and willing to, you know, put the time in because it's work. Do you think it's going to be Warren? You're going to be sitting within your rocking chair when you're 50 years old? It could be. It could it's possible. <laughs> yeah. Do you find that, um, your family are a little bit kind of hesitant about your relationship with him because of the age difference? Not at all. How big is the gap? He's uh, 22 years older than me. And there's just no, there's no kind of... With my family? Yeah. No, not at all. Do you find... No, they like him. Really? Mm hmm And what about, like I read somewhere that um, somebody asked you how you felt about, you know, his big Romeo, big sex symbol, all the beautiful women and all that kind of stuff. And it must knock you a little bit. Even even though you you know you may be very secure in a relationship yeah. with him, yeah, it does. But then the thing is, he's with me now. Yeah, he chose me. So, I mean, what I how the, another way of looking at it is just to say that he's got really good taste yeah. and that I'm in good company. Do you ever see any of his old flames around LA and stuff? Definitely. Are you getting any evil evil kind of looks or anything? No. 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 The one thing about Warren is that he he's on good terms with all of his exes. He stays friends with them all. Yeah. I don't know how he manages it. <laughs> Are you any good at doing that kind of thing? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's all or nothing with That's you. That's right. <laughs> Thank you very much You're welcome. for talking to us. It's been, it's been really good. Um, the best of luck with the tour. I'll be there along with about 75,000 other people watching right. you. Be sure to wave to me. Okay, okay. I will. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome.